The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 844. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have an amazing lady on the show today. She is a stand-up comedian and a writer, and I'm really excited to have her on today to share her story on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Julie Kim. Julie, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Sure. Hi, Sheena. So nice to be here. And thank you for having me. I am a stand up comedian and writer. I am uh, speaking to you right now from Vancouver, BC, Canada, where I'm based out of right now. But I am originally from Toronto and really excited to do a bunch of shows coming up in Canada, including a couple in Toronto. And I know that's where you are. So I'm in a really busy point right now in my, in, uh, my comedy career, which is so exciting. And uh, I'm glad to share. And I'm really impressed with your podcast. And I'm really glad to know that it exists. I've listened to a bunch of episodes. And yeah, I'm very impressed by your podcast. And congratulations on your success. Thank you so much. And I'm sure, you know, a lot of people are going to check out some of the shows that you're going to be at, especially since you're also opening for Ronnie Cheng, which is really amazing. So congrats to that. And Julie, what's your cultural background? My parents immigrated from South Korea separately, actually. But I would say as far as I know, that's my cultural background. I've never done like a 23 and me or anything like that to get any deeper. I think I'm afraid to know what, <laughs> what I might find out. That's all I know. And then I was born and raised in Toronto. So pretty much a Canadian from the point of inception. Thanks for sharing that. And what'd be your favorite self-confidence quote? This is an interesting question because I don't, I don't really rely on quotes that much. So I can't say I've got a catchy quote for you. I think what gives me self-confidence lately is just this idea of like, why not me? Why do I need, why do I need a reason to be self-confident? Like, why is that a thing that we have, you know, made into something that's like to be aspired to as if the starting point is a deficit of valuing ourselves, right? And and feeling like we, we should be confident in various aspects. So that is the short answer. I don't really have a favorite quote. I just look at life in terms of like me being responsible to make myself into someone that I really like and am proud of who then can create the life that she wants. Yeah. And, you know, for me, the, the phrase, why not me could be a quote, could be a quote on its own, right? Why not you, right? Instead of saying, why me, why not me, why not me be a comedian? Why not me be an entrepreneur? And maybe that's grammatically wrong, but it's okay. But you know, the concept is why not me, right? Why not? And, and it's, it's a great, for me, it's a great, I think it's a great quote because, you know, it's, it, it helps you to move forward, to have confidence, to go out there and forge your own path, whatever it may look like. So thanks for sharing that. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? The way I think of self-confidence is really just being yourself and liking that person. And so if I've got those things and know who I am and I'm confident in that, then I kind of know I can aspire, you know, to be or have whatever I want and then also have the ability to go out and get it. So to me, it's the sense of assuredness as well, like in me and my abilities. And also I think self-confidence for me is centered in my own approval and not needing external approval. Thanks for sharing that. And I love that definition because I know we can be our own worst enemy and we tend to hate every single thing that we do. And we have to learn to love ourselves. And that includes the good, the bad, the ugly, because that's what really makes us a beautiful mess, right? Life is messy. So are we. And it's okay to be that way, right? It's okay because that's how we, that's how that's, uh, you know, being messy helps us build confidence, keep moving forward, uh, have the courage to go uh, try different things, whatever it may be. So I really love your definition. Well, and if I can add to that, if you don't mind, it's, I also find just, it's, I find it funny, this concept of needing things to be like neat and perfect and, you know, without mistakes and needing everything to be clean. I find that 
uninteresting, honestly. So part of my definition of success in terms of like who I am and what I'm doing is that it's interesting and that I'm interesting. And, you know, especially as a comedian, I like messy. I think interesting insights and situations come out of messy. So yeah, that kind of neat packaging to me isn't at all a part of it. I think especially after you have kids and in after the pandemic, you realize like there's so many things you can't control and that's like just okay. It's not even a fault and okay. It's like reality and okay. So I think I've just also shifted that idea of like, what's ideal to be like more uh, one realistic and two interesting rather than totally neat and clean, boring. Love it. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Julie, what was your life like before you discovered (laughs) self-confidence? That's such an interesting question. I like, I don't know what the dividing point is. Certainly I know like a lot of people and, and especially a lot of women that, you know, we kind of like start off being not confident, but that kind of makes sense too. Cause it's like, we start off as babies, not knowing how to do anything. And we can't even like hold our heads up and stuff like that. So I think as you sort of just go through life and like learn stuff that, that goes away, you get a sense of mastery in many different ways. I, I, as, um, a young adult and a a woman sort of starting out and getting her own independence, I can say that the lack of self-confidence I had led me to make a lot of bad decisions. And, you know, I hear a lot of people say that they don't like to regret anything in the past and nothing was bad. And I actually do regret a lot of things. I mean, I get that you can't go back and change stuff and like whatever, but like, I think one of the main things that I did before I realized my value as an individual was like, I dated beneath me so much. Every single person I dated before my husband, I think was like a compromise in some way, or, you know, someone who, you know, didn't treat me that well, or wasn't good enough for me. And I know that sounds a little bit cocky, but like, I know so many women who date beneath them in terms of even how they're treated, or like the attributes of the guy or what they bring to the table. So like, I legitimately know that I, you know, dated beneath me a lot just to maybe have have someone or this like, you know, little validation of like being in a relationship and having someone, I don't know, is really dumb. I do regret it. I also think that, you know, I probably just cared too much about what other people thought. And that is, you know, never a good thing, but there's a trade-off too, right? Like when you're newer to life, you, you don't know stuff, right? Like, so you look around you to observe and understand and you rely more on guidance and things like that. So I think, I think there's a trade-off. Like, I think people are necessarily like that earlier on because they don't know anything, but then there comes the time when you really, you know, step into your own and understand that you, you know, have the tools and start making better decisions and, and lean into who you are. So I think that happened kind of gra- gradually for sure. But, but, but may I add one more thing? I, there's also a characteristic of like openness. Like there are people whose brains and hearts and emotions are open to the suggestion of new things and new ways of thinking. So I also think there's like the matter of like fake confidence. There's people who decide at 21, this is who I am. This is what I believe, whether it's like from a strict religious background or a parent parenting background or something like that. So that's like, they feel competent, but it's not necessarily a legitimate better way to be. I have always been open to new ideas and philosophies and inclinations. So that could look like, like from an external viewer's point of view, that could look like insecurity or not being confident, but that's me being open and exploring and like entertaining different ways to be or or a different like, you know, views of myself and my life as well. I think it's kind of complicated. Yeah. I mean, when it comes to confidence, right, there's no one way of doing it. And so it's important to try different things to see what works for you and what doesn't work for you. So at least, you know, like, okay, maybe reading's not for me, but working out is um, meditation, like meditation is definitely not for me. And, and so I, I scrap it. Right. Because sometimes we also have this like thinking that there's only one way to build confidence when really there's many different ways and we're, you know, we're all different. So of course, how we do things will always be differently. It won't be the same thing. There'll be similar things, but it would totally be different. So, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that just going out there and just trying to see what happens. Right. It's like when you travel and you want to try different foods, it's not always going to be a winner every time 
time you try something different, but at least you went out there and did it. That's the best part of it. And Julie, you know, what was that point in your life when you realized you stepped into your own power, your why not me moment, especially going into comedy, right? It's not a very typical route for an Asian girl to go and make a career out of it. But yeah, what was your aha moment that made you, you know, push through? I can't say there was one moment. I would say there's just the accumulation of experiences and knowledge and I think little steps of confidence, right? And 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 becoming clearer on who I am and like working towards uh, that more. So yeah, there was never any one moment. I also never really had the goal to be self-confident. I always knew that to be confident in or or, or in a way where it was elusive, like I've always thought if you're confident in something, it's because like you've got something to back it up. So I've always seen life as like a progression where I become more and better and I do stuff and I accumulate, you know, credits or education or whatever. So it's something that like I just assumed would naturally come. I've never thought of as a deficit in my personality. I think one kind of trend like throughout my early working years that was really eye-opening was like just noticing the number of fakes out there right like working at these companies and like these there's a lot of like often like older men who are really confident and since they're really confident they're the ones in leadership positions or people catapult them into those positions because they like look the part or they talk the part and they've got the confidence whether for real or fake and then just like knowing after a while that like, oh, these people are not legitimately smarter than me. Do you know what I mean? And so like, there's just like more and more of that. And then you get to the point where you're like, I, one, am smarter than most of these people and also can get shit done more than most people. Like if you look at any organization where like a lot of people work, there are very few people who actually do good work. And then of those people, there are very few people who actually have the resolve and grit to power through things and see results. So it's a it's a numbers thing, <laughs> honestly, just like, you know, being around uh, people and just like realizing, like, I think seeing the total picture of the world and the people you're around and the value that you add relative to like some of these other people around, that was enough for me. Yeah, no, I totally get it, right? I mean, they always say what you see in social media, don't believe everything you see, right? And especially when it comes to forging your own path or going into entrepreneurship, you know, you see people in fancy cars and big houses. And I'm not saying all of them, you know, are fakes, but there's some that it's just like they're they're just showing off, right? Or you see them showing off their new cars and stuff. And then when you talk about talk to them, it's like, you know, they have no money. So it's, you know, it's crazy. It's crazy that a lot of that happens, um, not only in social media, but just whatever you see, like that perception, especially like in Asian culture, right? There's so many people who have that perfect family photos, not realizing behind closed doors what's happening. And it happens more, like more often than you realize. So I'm glad you were able to bring that up because, you know, I think it's a great reminder. Sometimes when we look at something, we just have to learn to like look at it and kind of let it go because we never know what's what's happening behind that photo or behind that post. But, you know, you accumulating you know, little steps of confidence. What's your life been like now? I really like my life right now. Honestly, Sheena, I would say that like I, there's a great satisfaction in doing what you want to do with your time and your brain and your creative energy. And so more and more, I'm, I'm doing that as much as possible. There's a freedom in feeling confident and not worrying about what other people think about you. Like it's just noise anyways. So, I mean, I get that stuff now, even from like YouTube comments or like trolls on the internet. And that means literally nothing to me because those things are like, they have zero legitimacy, right? Like there's, you know, and and that's how I feel about like anyone who's got, you know, negative things to say, or anyone who would want to bring you down even in person. It's like, what are you doing? Like, why is this person not focusing on their life and even putting anything over here in terms of my space? So one of the ways I deal, you know, with any kind of negativity is like, if if someone is judging me or, or like in a way that's not constructive or criticizing me, I basically oust them from my life, Sheena, like there's not enough time for the people that I really like and love and the people that, you know, inspire me. Not that it's like, you know, one way and everything's about lifting me up. I'm a very loyal friend and like everyone goes through hard times but I cannot let that negativity in. It's just not productive. And like, it's just crappy. There's enough bad stuff in the world. So I would 
would say I feel very free right now. I feel very unencumbered with respect to, you know, negativity and toxicity uh, um, around me as well. I'm very excited about where I am taking my life, like a lot of the major steps towards being here, like in terms of my level of self confidence, but also my career have come quite directly from big steps and risks that I have taken. So I know that if I continue to behave like this and take these risks and follow my my hearts, my passions, but also works in a smart way, that good things will happen. So I, I feel really good about that. I love it. And thanks so much for sharing that. And, you know, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey to self-confidence. What'd be that one tip you would give to her? Often I like to think of like when I'm thinking of myself or when I'm telling a friend, you know, to make a decision like at all, I often think of like this scenario where pretend you are outside your body and you're like a friend you really like or love or or a relative. What advice would you you give to yourself? What pep talk would you give to yourself? What value would you ascribe to yourself? And that, you know, gives some subject uh, uh, objectivity. Thanks so much for your tips. I I really love what you mentioned, you know, just seeing yourself from the outside because it it does give you a different perspective, right? It's like, you know, if you told your best friend, if your best friend was like telling you that she was ugly, you would tell her, no, you're not, right? So it would be the same thing. Like if you told yourself from an outside point, you would be like, no, you're not. What's wrong with you? Why would you say that to yourself? And it's important to, to do it that way so that we feel like, okay, we're not we're not crazy. You know, we want to, you know, we want to be able to work on ourselves and realize like, you know, we need to be a little bit kinder, especially to ourselves, be our own best friend. So thanks for sharing that tip. And if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, is there any links or social media profiles they can connect with? Yeah, sure. I am everywhere as Julie Kim Comedy at Julie Kim Comedy. And my website is juliekimcomedy.com. I would say that's it. I also have a YouTube channel under juliekimcomedy.com. And I will be releasing more videos soon because I have a bunch from the tour. I've just been too busy to post them, but I, I promise to do that. So yeah, that's about it. I really appreciate you having me on, Sheena. Yeah, thank you so much, Julie. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Julie, you can also head on over to the thetowofselfconfidence.com and search for Julie's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I just want to thank Julie again for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Julie. Thank you, Sheena. Not a problem. It was really great having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of The Tao of Self-Confidence. You can order your copy of Asian Women Who Boss Up Book by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.